Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome to the Battle of Adelton Moor. Um, we are going to be playing as Parliament, I believe, uh, in this fight. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see uh, what actually happens. I believe we have to stop the Royalists as um, the Parliamentarians, so we are going to try and do that. Uh, let's go ahead, advance, and see how it goes. Now, in this battle, we actually have to stop the enemy before they get to us. We have no pikemen whatsoever. Um, and so what we have are muskets. Uh, interestingly enough, it looks like we need to basically use these hedges here to defend our muskets from their cavalry. Uh, sort of makes sense. Uh, we'll go ahead and proceed here, and hopefully we can actually accomplish this task. Because it seems kind of complicated right now. Uh, I guess we just have to move up a bit. Um, I like this sort of road area. There's a nice obstacle here, so I'm going to go ahead and start moving my musketeers that way. We obviously want to get them, um, you know, behind cover. So let's just go ahead and start moving them there. Pushing them forward here. Pushing them forward here. We've even got some club men. I mean, this is the, the situation with our forces. We simply don't have enough forces to stop the royals. All we have are musket men. And the few close combat troops we have are club men. These are just regular uh, peasant militia with clubs, pretty much. So... Let's go ahead, advance. I believe we're set up pretty good. Let's get some more clubmen up there. These guys can kind of fight off any attacks coming behind us, and we shall deploy. All right, guys, once again, I'm just going to get over here in the enclosures. Uh, we want to take advantage, obviously, of these hedges. <clears throat> and it looks like we do have two parliamentarian cavalry units, but I don't think they're going to be of much help. Uh, yeah, we'll keep moving this way. How's it going, folks? Good to see you guys. So yeah, I'd like to break um, through to this hedge over here. I think you guys are seeing that, the road. If possible, um, we might not have enough time to do that. Uh, the enemy might actually get here before that occurs, but we're going to still draw it. All right, end the turn. Oh, wait a minute. Do we move our... Yeah, we moved our cannons. that guys they've got a tremendous amount of pikemen back there i didn't expect that uh so this is just the frontal assault here uh that they're sending at us uh their pikes are still all the way in the moor i don't know how that's going to affect this particular battle but it looks like it's going to make our job a lot harder good to see you war pig napoleon I don't even think club men really work as a meat shield, Napoleon, because they, they get knocked out so quickly in this game. Um, but yeah, I, I get the idea more or less. Keep on moving forward. We've got to try and get to the edge here. I now understand why these guys have started back here. Uh, we're trying to beat off these detached musketeers. These are just detached units, which means they're part of a bigger unit. Um, so we need to try and break them and take advantage over here. So I'm, I'm really pushing these musketeers forward. We can't get a shot yet, and especially with these rudimentary muskets, uh, you got to be pretty damn close to get an accurate shot, like one or two tiles. Clubmen. All right, guys, we're about to break over here. Um, I'm going to keep the cavalry behind because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if their dragoons will advance. And then we can open fire on them with a the parliamentarian horse. The parliamentarian horse do come with um, hand cannons or, you know, hand muskets, I guess. But I believe in this in this time period they were called hand cannons uh, to defend themselves. So they can definitely throw a volley at the enemy. shots from the moor <clears throat> man i'm amazed they're able to get those shots with all of the cover we have here obviously they're seeing us from you know almost a, 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 th a third person view but i'm still shocked okay we should be able to get some shots off now folks yes they're firing at the detached mus musketeers for parliament 
That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's keep on moving. Oh boy. A little reactionary fire there. No worries. I didn't really do this entire movement, um, but it looks like we're going to be nice. And we'll move the pikeman forward. It's actually some really good shots by the, by the Royalist uh, Musketeers, I have to admit. They're getting some very, very good shots off. Like seven for a reactionary shot? That's good. That's very good. Uh, I think we're going to have to move these guys up a little more carefully. We don't just want to put them out in the open if we can help it. Once again, I'm really using cover there, guys. I don't want to get those guys out in the open. I'd prefer them to uh, have as much cover behind these hedges as possible. And let's hope this also defends them from musket fire. End the turn. Thank you, Tommy. Absolutely right. It's definitely, uh, definitely a war that's not spoken about, as you mentioned, uh, as much as the American Civil War. In oh boy. Yeah, so the Royalist forces, uh, they've got some pretty good musketeers here. Obviously, their musketeers have had a little more time to train than ours have, um, and it shows. It definitely shows. So we want to try to get to that, that, that edge of the moor before they actually get here with their pikemen, and that could be a fight in itself. Hello, Anton. Right. I was worried about this. Yeah, getting their cavalry to the right. Uh, but I think we could stop this with our own cavalry. Let's hope this works out. They're making a mistake here. They're advancing with their musketeers. It's potentially a chance for us to break those musketeer units, guys. Especially the ones that are out in the open. Ooh, they disrupted one. They've already got one of our units disrupted. I didn't want this to occur. Got the residual shooting. Hope we get some shots. And you can see the aim of our men is just not as good. It's just not as good, period. Okay, it's turn for Parliament. So one thing I'm going to do, um, go ahead and turn. Full blast on the Dragoons, and we actually disrupted them. We can also charge, but that charge isn't going to be as effective as I want it to be. So I'm actually just going to fire. I would turn as well, but we're not in a position where we can turn and fire. But we can fire like this. And uh, then we can sort of focus on one of these detached musket units. I'm thinking this one right here. Clubmen are coming up. Hopefully they'll target the clubmen as um, Napoleon mentioned. Those poor clubmen, man. Like, talk about a, a basic weapon. You know, you're going back to, like, practically the Stone Age. But whatever works. Okay, so this guy's out in the open. I'm going to go ahead and turn... We're catching a lot of hits there. This guy's fragmented. He's going to break pretty soon. I'm moving the club men up right here. Obviously, they're going to have to wait a turn or two to attack. And I'd love to move forward with the rest of the team, but I know better. I really do. So we will move forward with these guys, however. And remember, our cavalry is capable of opening fire. We're going to take advantage of that. All right, fingers crossed for Parliament, boys. Yes, the muskets are very loud in this game. That's that's absolutely true.
massive section of uh, Royalist horse here. England's last night. And we have to deal with them. And again, if they can break through these hedges and get to our men, we are in serious trouble. The goal in this battle, um, as it happened in real life, is to hide behind the hedges, hit their horsemen, retreat behind other hedges, hit their horsemen. And the cavalry can never really react to them. Um, there we go. Wow, that cavalry's Interesting, Tommy, that's really cool. Uh, he says, a number of parliamentarian commanders had served as mercenaries with Danes and the Swedes over in Germany, and they helped them formulate the model army. And this makes sense, all Protestants. Hey, Pieter, good to see you, man. All right, let's hope the resistance phase smiles brightly upon us. No, it doesn't look like it's going to, but it's back to our turn. Now, we've got those club men, and I really do want to attack, but you can see how terrible they are. I mean, our chance of victory is 2%. Um, it's just not good. Let's uh, turn this way. Get a full of fire on the enemy there. I was hoping that would be more effective. It doesn't look like it. What about a charge? Nope, that's not going to be effective either. And yeah, even our cavalry uh, is not as good as the enemy cavalry. It just isn't. All right, moving forward with our muskets. We're going to have to be out in the open for just a little bit. We could actually deploy this uh, cannon. I didn't think we were going to be able to deploy this, but now I'm thinking maybe. Let's unlimber it, and uh, hopefully next turn it can open fire. Right now we're just exchanging shots. I'm not confident enough to charge, but I think we eventually do have to charge over here a little bit um, just, to, just to get a better position than the enemy pretty much. Sending the clubmen forward. Let's see what they do. Uh, and we'll, of course, try to break this cavalry unit. I'm pretty sure this guy will break this turn. Uh, and we'll actually go ahead and break him with a charge. Beautiful. That's one hell of a way to send off the royalists. And at this point, we will start advancing with the rest of our units. In fact, we can get a shot at that. Really neat, man. We're slightly out of cover now, but we can fix that next turn. All right, guys, let's hope that those cannons actually are useful. And the turn here. Thanks, Napoleon. Yeah, I guess it's when we get the actual round that the cavalry starts being pretty good. And I don't think we have that early in the battle, or early in the war, I should say. So the good news is their cavalry, it's going to take a long time to get here. They're taking like the long way around. And here we go, guys. We're getting the specifics of the actual impact charge here. Um, you could turn this off if you want. I like to have like very specific uh, information that's going to give you like basically all, every little bit of information here. Um, but you can just get basics like, uh, you know, casualties on both sides, etc. Yeah, so the enemy is definitely trying to charge through here. This, this poses a, an opportunity to force the enemy to retreat here um, with some units and break the other units as well. I don't know, guys. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Hey, yo, how you doing, bud? <clears throat> I love Icon Rostov with the awesome Gripamaxenius badge there. And on our Twitch channel, um, 
Dave Jiju has done a tremendous amount of stuff to improve things. So we're going to start having um, like Twitch exclusive battles there as well. Try to get some tanks, infantry, things like that. That's, those were the badges I was looking for. Um, chevrons for ranks. <laughs> Napoleon says, the clubman did his job. That's why we salute him. <laughs> you mean he got shot at? Well, I guess that is his job. Yeah, that's a good point. Poor clubman. He never did anything to anybody. Like, literally, he never did anything to anybody. Just stood there and got shot. It's, he hasn't even managed an attack here. Okay, let's fire. Um, actually, I might fire at this unit. I know he's um, way off our axis here. But I see an opportunity to potentially break this guy. He's just in a really bad position there out in the open. And with these clubmen, yeah, we could charge with these guys as well. Um, but we need to greatly weaken this unit. And we disrupted them. How, am how amazing would it be if our clubmen could break this unit? We're going to charge with the clubmen. The enemy is evading. We get a rear attack. Charging with the clubmen. 10. They've broken. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, Napoleon, y your prayer to the clubmen has worked, man. They just broke. A royalist unit, a royalist um, musket unit broken by clubmen and being beaten to death by wooden sticks. <laughs> that is pretty terrible for them. A absolutely awesome for us. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Peter. Sorry about that. And as you can see, we're playing on the toughest difficulty here, guys. I've played this game so much that uh, any other difficulty is pretty, pretty simple. Hmm. Boom. Disrupted. We got another disruption in the enemy lines. The problem is they outnumber us. So even if we manage to break a few of these units, we have to break a lot more of the enemy units than they do of, of us um, to win this battle. Here we go. Think we can get a charge? No. It's not safe yet. And I would charge with the pikemen here too, but um, here the clubmen would actually do really poorly. <clears throat> Get right up there. Oh, there you go, boys. We could have turned, but I don't want this guy getting a flanking shot on us. No worries, man. If anybody ever has that issue, please tell me, because then we end up having a video um, where people can't hear me talking a lot of the time. Um, so if you guys, if you think the sound is too loud, just tell me and I'll, uh, I'll absolutely lower it. I appreciate that, Peter. Yeah, it looks like this, uh, I thought this cannon would be in a proper position, but yeah, two hedges is going to cover it. I think we're going to have to pack up with the cannon and move it up to this hedge for it to be effective. Uh, and I just hope that those Royalist Cavalry don't get here in time. Okay, ending the turn. Yeah, that was nasty. That absolutely disrupted our cavalry. Their cavalry are much better than ours, so it's uh, it, it's a tough fight when it comes down to that. That was really unexpected. Yeah, it was. That's pretty rare. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Amazing job by those club men. They must be so proud of themselves. What would be great is if there was a button like, okay, pick up muskets, <laughs> and they would be a useful unit. Somewhat useful. Good old club men. problem fragmented and i think they can break us here if not here definitely next turn they're also getting behind our lines although we don't really have set lines during this battle because we're, we're stuck in these hedges so 
we can kind of have several different squads, if that makes sense, uh, fighting at once. Okay, I think here we have a definite chance of breaking the enemy. They're in front of so many of our units. Uh, and we're behind cover, they're not. So this is, this is a big opportunity here. There we go, we've disrupted one of them. That's great. That's all we need, little chinks in the enemy's armor. Okay. Yeah, those clubmen are now open season for the rest of the enemy army. Okay, nice. We got an enemy falling back there. I want to take a look here. Yeah. Very nice. We're going to use the club men again. Now, they are disrupted, so I don't think they're going to be too effective, but if the enemy evades. Yeah, not bad. So Napoleon is saying don't charge with our muskets, and it's it, he's right. It's just a shame because this would definitely be a break, but he's absolutely right. Charging right now, it's going to make us open to the rest of the enemy army, uh, and we have no way of stopping that charge. Once your guys get into a battle frenzy, they're, they're not going to stop for anybody. Um, let's go ahead and get another shot here. Kind of tempted to try this charge. 5% chance of a win, 11% chance of a loss. The rest would be indecisive, which means it could really go either way. Um, but the fact is, the enemy outnumbers us, so I, I don't think we can do anything risky, really. With the exception of maybe charging them inside the actual moor when they attack. Hmm. All right. Oh, nice. Our cannon does work. Beautiful. Um, so I'm actually going to use it on this guy out in the open. Oh, yes. Here we have to go for the charge, guys. Our musketeers are going to attack their detached musketeers. It looks like they're going to evade. We'll try to catch up with them, but in this position, we have to go for the charge. Um, especially, like Nicole said, we've got this unit holding out so bravely, and it's giving us an opportunity to react here. Okay, I think that's going to be it. End the turn. Hey, how you doing, Dave? Uh, so sorry, Dave. Um, I got your messages about uh, Discord. I was just telling people here we're absolutely going to jump on that today or tomorrow. I'll get that all set up. Um, Dave has done so much cool stuff with Discord uh, and just discovered so much about what we can do there. Excuse me, not Discord, uh, Twitch. Uh, discovered so much about what we can do there on Twitch. Um, that's going to just totally change the channel. It's going to look really neat. And it's it's been my laziness that has uh, that has stopped us from from. Uh, fully uh, improving the Twitch channel. Perfect. That's awesome, man. That's good for me, too. This week is pretty uh, pretty full for me, but um, I, I want to get that set up. I don't think it'll take too long. Um, once we just sit down, I think it'll probably take 5-10 minutes um, to put all the codes in. Um, but it's going to give everybody the opportunity to, to do a lot more on that channel. Um, there, there's just, I was even kind of looking at the possibilities of Twitch. You can even play games. There's Blackjack. Like, you can actually have Blackjack in the chat. It's amazing. Um, I, I just love the different possibilities. We haven't fully explored every single one of them, but we're definitely going to be changing the channel big time.
Speaking of which, guys, if you haven't already, click that link in the lower left corner uh, for Twitch. And I think uh, in this battle, we don't ever have to worry about the cavalry. I'm just looking at their movement. For them to get all the way over here is going to take so long, but here's the thing about this battle. Um, the whole point of the Battle of Audleton Moor is the parliamentarians had a stronghold, um, but they advanced into Audleton Moor to stop the royalists from getting to that stronghold um, because they knew they would be you know, overrun, essentially. So I'm thinking what that cavalry signifies. It might not even be coming over here. It might just be going to the end of the map and getting off the actual map itself. Uh, and maybe if that happens, the royalists win the battle. I I'm not sure, guys. Overall, it's a royalist victory. It's pretty hard to get a parliamentarian victory in this fight. Um, it can happen, but you can see the amount of troops the Royalists have compared with what we have. If we want to win, we have to break them really early. There we go, broke another detached musketeer unit. That's what he gets for running. It actually caused him to break faster. Thank you, Dave. Hey, how you doing, Eric? How you doing, man? I no see. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dave. I forgot about that series. That was fun. I think that was our first series with Pike and Shot. Uh, great, glorious Swedish campaign. Okay, yep, they finally broke that unit. I'm amazed that the cavalry's still holding. All right, so 21%. All right, first thing we're going to do, guys, we want to break these guys. Uh, we use our cav to clear them off the map here. Incredibly, they held. There we go. I know the enemy's at distance, but uh, we don't want to leave this area under any circumstances. So if we're going to shoot, we're going to shoot from here. Yeah, I know better than to charge. Now this is a really bad situation. You can see the enemy's detached musketeers are right behind our musketeers. Uh, that's a perfect opportunity for a charge there. So I don't think we have a choice. We, we might have to go ahead. Oh, I wanted to move forward. I messed up there big time. Um, yeah, we, we don't have a choice there. What about here? <clears throat> I love the club men just chasing people off the battlefield. <laughs> Never gets old. Really underrated, man. They come in handy. Yeah, I think that's going to be it for us, guys. I don't see any way we're, how we can win this battle. Uh, win the turn here. Of course, we want our men to fight a glorious, a glorious battle either way. I mean, whether it's a victory or defeat, we want them to go down fighting. And I think we've bloodied the Royalists a bit. They never expected us to win this fight, but uh, we've shown them that us parliamentarians are willing to put up a fight. Ooh, nice, man. Can do. We can do some midway or some, uh, some maybe even a battle, you know, the Battle of Pearl Harbor. Something like this. I don't think we do a lot of uh, naval stuff on the channel. I would say of all the um, sort of, um, you know, army branches we focus on, I think Navy's probably the one we focus on the least. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to do maybe some, uh, you know, some battles or some campaigns where, you know, where we are you know, basically using the Navy uh, to combat the enemy. Order of Battle is one option, guys, where we can actually play as, um, you know, the Navy itself, or we could play as the Marines, we could play as the Army, um, but in sort of semi-Pacific battles, so there'll be a lot of ships, etc. Oh, wow, I didn't know that, Napoleon. Oh, so the so the history's wrong on the game, because the game says that the, ro the uh, Royalists outnumber the Parliamentarians. Interesting. So pretty even between the two. Although I think technology makes a big difference. You know, even if they're evenly matched, if the Royalists had cavalry, pikemen, and the Parliamentarians just had musketmen, yeah, that would be a problem. 
There we go. The poor clubmen finally getting disrupted. I think the booze has worn off. The day's mead ration has worn off the clubmen, and they're they're finally realizing that they just have clubs, and uh, that's a problem. Oh look, those clubmen actually rallied. Got a little more grog in them. Yeah, over here, they completely crushed us. Okay. Yep, gonna charge. Oh, it's so frustrating. We can't hit them. Uh, we're gonna have to turn around and, and face these guys. Before. Disrupted. Beautiful. Really nice. Um, fire at the pikemen all the way out there. Once the pikemen get here, the battle is over. Fire! This is where we spring our trap as best we can, um, and we basically try to hit the pikemen before they even reach uh, the moors. Or not the moors, but the hedges, because the moors are actually here where they're coming from. That's why it takes them so long to leave that area. There we go. Nice little disruption on the enemy line. And that's a break. Oh, the musketeers. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was pretty bad. Um, let me see if we have any other guys left to fight here. No, it doesn't look like it. We do have our uh, clubmen still. We'll move them forward. Okay. And I think that's going to be it for now. Enemy's going to try and break the medium guns, and I think they'll succeed. 8% of the enemy army has been routed. Wow, interesting. Uh, so Napoleon just found out that uh, most of the parliamentarian army in this battle were clubmen. And the clubmen were highwaymen. For people that don't know what highwaymen are, uh, highwaymen are ex essentially highway robbers. Um, sometimes they act as sheriffs, though. It depends. It's kind of like a knight, good knights, bad knights. With highwaymen, you can have some highwaymen that will demand a fee to pass. Uh, some highwaymen that will still demand a fee, but they'll offer you services and, you know, protection on the roads, things like this. Um, so that's interesting to see that they, you know, turn their uh, attention to joining Parliament uh, for a battle. I guess they, they, they put their lot in in the Civil War. Although I'm guessing they probably got paid, too. So uh, that was an extra bonus. And yeah, look at this. Uh, Royalist cavalry cutting us off. Even if we won here, um, it wouldn't be a realistic win because the enemy would crush us um, after some time. All that, that entire, like, group coming for just the club men. <laughs> must really have it in for them. They must have been robbed a few times. Okay, guys. I think this is kind of our last hurrah. And I will charge with the clubmen if we find a good opportunity to do so. So if we can disrupt these guys, drag them, I should say, I, I will charge. Here we go, guys. Clubmen in action once again. Oh, so close. We definitely hurt the enemy, but we did not break them. I wonder if we should run it. I think it's our only chance. Um... We're going we're gonna to actually run out with the musket unit and try and break them here. It didn't work, but, you know, seeing as we have so many losses, I kind of figured that's that's our best chance at potentially turning this battle around. Asian is real in this game, man. It really is. That's mostly what's crushing us here, because um, I totally forgot about the evasion, because you don't nearly get as many evades in uh, Field of Glory 2, so I'm, I've been a bit spoiled, I have to admit. 
Yeah, I find that fascinating too, Eric. I, I find that really interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense in the sense that, like, um, during a war, obviously, there's not going to be much money to be made on the highways. Not a lot of people are moving around. The only movement that you're going to have, of course, is going to be military movement. And no highwayman in their right mind is going to try to rob a military convoy. So maybe, just maybe, and I'm, you know, I'm just, just, uh, this is all subjective. Um, maybe um, they decided, hey, you know, there's there's some money to be made here if we join this army. We've got weapons. Uh, let's see if they'll pay us. I think that would make sense. Some much nastier people have fought in some much better armies throughout history. But yeah, high women generally, like 90% of the time, it's a bad connotation. It's people that rob people on uh, highways, which really, um, to us, just was really a large dirt road um, back then. Careful, not all highwaymen were peasants. Not all highwaymen were peasants. There were some highwaymen that had plenty of money and just enjoyed robbing people. Um, that was, that certainly existed. There was sort of a, an adventurous quality to them, you know? And now the pikes have reached the line and this is where things get very dangerous. Uh, once their pikes reach our line, for us to actually get out of the situation, it's be tough, man. We actually disrupted their unit, guys. Unbelievable. Another issue with this battle is the actual length of the battlefield itself is pretty long. Um, for a unit that's fragmented, or I should say for a unit that breaks to continue running after like three or four turns is pretty rare. They'll usually um, be able to reform after two or three turns. So when you have a field this long, um, and especially terrain as bad as the moor, the enemy has a lot of chances um, to reform their unit. And that, that makes this battle a lot more challenging. Oh, clubmen! Clubmen auto broke a unit! Yes! Glory to the clubmen, guys! They broke another one. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> These guys are insane, man. We've also disrupted a group of pikemen. Wow. I didn't expect this to happen at all. I still think we're going to lose, but if we can get the enemy to 15% uh, break, that's going to be amazing. Okay, fragmented. I think one more attack on that unit, and we're going to break the cavaliers. So much for the royalist cavaliers. Hopefully next turn, they will be completely broken. Uh, as for these guys, I'll turn. Open fire at those Cavaliers. The problem here is going to be the rear charge that they're almost certainly going to do. Okay, we're already engaged in combat. I was hoping it wasn't yet at that point. I think clubmen's are actually disguised sword master mercenaries. Yeah. I think it's just, the, I think it's the alcohol. I think they probably get really drunk, and so they're not afraid of anything. They're kind of like our version of berserkers, uh, but with not very good weapons. They don't seem to be afraid of, of anything, so they've seen just about uh, any nasty situation. I mean, being highwaymen, they probably have their friends killed. You know, they, it's, they haven't had the best life. Okay, ending the town. Okay, 
And there we go. The clubman finally broke on the right. Took him long enough, though. They put in a great fight. And imagine being beaten to death by a club. <laughs> oh, man. That is just a terrible way to go. Royalists, I think this turn is pretty much uh, finish us off. Yep, nice flank attack there. Well done uh, by the Royalists. And incredibly, our men held on, but uh, that was a pretty good use of of uh, the positioning here. They kind of stayed behind on the second tile, so I didn't think they were going to be able to get the charge, but as you can see, they absolutely managed it. And now the pikemen have got our musketeers stuck in here. This is where things get tough, and their cavalry have arrived. This is a mopping up job. I even wonder if the royalists would take prisoners in a battle like this. I think they would probably just slaughter us, because uh, they've beaten us in just about every way here. They outnumber us, they've surrounded us, uh, we have gotten some decent attacks, we've broken some interesting units, but that's not going to stop them from unleashing um, their royalist wrath upon us, and I think that's exactly what would occur here. What do you guys think? Do you guys, um, in fact, does anybody know uh, how prisoners were dealt with in the English Civil War? There we go, broken. The poor clubmen are broken, guys. When the clubmen break, we all break. Actually, the clubmen are still there, sorry. The musketmen are broken. The clubmen have been disrupted. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so, too. I think, uh, I don't think there would be any point in taking prisoners in a battle like this. You know, usually you take prisoners if, uh, maybe you have a large group that's gonna be hard to control. Uh, but something like this? Ah. Uh, they've got the cover of the Moors, uh, to hide their slaughter. I'm not sure it's gonna end well. I think a lot of these soldiers are gonna end up buried in these Moors, let's put it that way. Especially the club men. <laughs> They're not going to let them get away with that. Oh, wow. There's some units rallying. Very brave musketeers. That's it, boys. We cannot conceal that this was a defeat. Lord help us all. Well, there we go, guys. So it's actually pretty even in terms of the casualties there. Um, if we look at, you know, we lost 469 and we killed 281. I think all things considered, this was going to be a defeat, um, you know, historically. Uh, not bad. Not bad, obviously. Um, and over time, Parliament would be would create an even better army, the new model army, uh, have even better cavalry, the roundheads. We can actually see some roundheads right there. Um, and yeah, just make an incredible force uh, to face the Royalists. But this is, of course, one of the earlier battles. Uh, not necessarily a battle that's entirely in our favor. Um, of course, there are a lot of other English Civil War battles here, guys, that we could play in the future. Um, we also have other Pike and Shot campaigns, campaigns uh, here in-game, as well as stuff we can download off the internet. Uh, so if anything appeals to you guys, uh, take a look, drop it down below, and maybe in another stream uh, we can play one of these. Again, I like to just do the single battles, um, but if you jump into the campaign, you get a selection of like, uh, I think it's six to eight battles uh, we could select from that. And of course, all this stuff made on the internet by pretty amazing modders. Like for instance, uh, Marengo 1800, but that's not even the best one. Islandawana. We actually have this somewhere on the channel, uh, the Battle of Islandawana, but we could play here. Uh, we could play this next time. Uh, against the Zulu, just the, the different, you know, battles you can play in this game is pretty amazing. It's one of the reasons I love it so much. Okay, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all had fun. This battle lasted a little longer than I expected, and I was pretty impressed by the clubmen. Uh, so I shall catch you on the next one, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, very cool. Thanks, Dave. Oh, so it left everything to field commanders. So Dave found out that basically the prisoners of war, that was the decisions were left to field commanders. So I assume some were pretty brutal and maybe some were pretty uh, fair. Wow. Nasty, nasty stuff.
right, Bois. And yeah, head on over anytime you guys want to the Discord as well, guys, because um, we I love these historical conversations. I've been going over more to the Discord because I've been obsessed with Rust recently, um, and that requires me to be on Discord a lot. So uh, I will definitely stop by. If any of you guys want to bring up this, um, you know, historical stuff there, I always like having these conversations. Yeah, definitely, Tommy, definitely. Um, the Thirty Years' War was brutal. Um, but as I mentioned there, I think, you know, both wars were, were pretty nuanced, probably a lot more nuanced than we think. But um, in the Thirty Years' War, you would have, for instance, um, you know, a Protestant leader that had a Catholic mercenary force or a Catholic leader that had a Protestant mercenary force. Uh, there's actually a movie about this. I think it's called The Hidden Valley. Um, about the rivalries that would happen inside units. So it was just, you know, I think it was really more about um, nobility, fighting nobility. Um, but, of course, the, the Protestant Catholic tinge is always is always in there somewhere. All right, guys. I'll stream some rust. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Would you guys want me to do that? I, I don't – I've always thought about it, but I just don't know if it would appeal to most people here. Uh, it's very different from any of the games we play. Um and, uh, you know, I, but I might try that. I might try that. I mean, I, I've been spending a lot of time on Rustly recently. All right, folks, I'll catch you on the next one.